Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the headlines. Four terrorists eliminated in encounter in Anantnag and Jammu in Kashmir. One policeman martyred and a civilian injured. Elite NSG commandos to be deployed in Bali for counter-terror operations. Jammu and Kashmir Governor calls an all-party meeting today to discuss situation after imposition of Governor's rule, approves the State Administrative Council, reviews the major matters of pending approval since the BJP-PDP government collapsed. World waiting to see the speed with which India enters a $5 trillion economy club, says Prime Minister Modi, asks the Commerce Ministry officials to take up the target of reaching double-digit growth as a challenge, lays foundation stone for state-of-the-art building for the ministry in New Delhi. Enforcement Directorate moves to clamp down on Vijay Malia under newly promulgated Fugitive Economic Offenders Ordinance, moves court in Mumbai to declare him fugitive offender and confiscate assets worth 12,500 crore rupees. And Brazil to play Costa Rica in Group E match on day 9 of the FIFA World Cup today. Nigeria to clash with Iceland. Now, Serbia and Switzerland to play against each other in Group E encounter. Our top stories from Jammu and Kashmir where four terrorists have been eliminated in an encounter in Anantnag in Jammu and Kashmir today. A policeman was also martyred. A civilian has also been killed. The encounter is currently on. The militants include uh, Islamic State in Jammu and Kashmir chief uh, Dawood and three others. They were gunned down after security forces uh, received intelligence inputs about the presence of terrorists there. DGP SP, S, uh, SP Weather said that a search operation turned into a gunfight after the militants fired upon the security forces. Meanwhile, internet services remain suspended in Srinagar as well as in Anantnag due to the ongoing encounter. And a policeman H.C. Habibullah, who was injured in a terrorist attack on a police party in Srinagar's Karan Nagar last week, succumbed to his injuries today. The Jammu and Kashmir police confirmed the demise of Habibullah, who was undergoing treatment after being critically injured when militants fired at him. A wreath-laying ceremony was held today to pay homage to the deceased beat constable in district police lines in Srinagar this morning. Meanwhile, in the wake of uh, increasing encounters as well as the uh, counter-militancy operations in Kashmir, uh, the National Security Guards are likely to be deployed soon in the valley. A team of uh, NSG has been stationed in the Kashmir Valley for quite some time and is undergoing uh, rigorous training in the outskirts of the city. The decision for the deployment in counter-terror operations was taken uh, by the Home Ministry recently and they will be put to use uh, soon after their acclimatization program is over. On to some political news from Jammu and Kashmir, where uh, Governor N.N. Vora has called an all-party meeting in Srinagar today to discuss the situation in the wake of the implementation of governor's rule in the state. Now, heads of all political parties have been called for the meeting, which will be held at the Raj Bhavan. This will be Vora's uh, first interaction with the political parties after assuming the reign of administration in the state. Jammu and Kashmir was uh, placed under governor's rule on Wednesday, a day after the PDP-BJP government collapsed as the BJP snapped its uh, three-year-old alliance with the regional party. Meanwhile, the governor also approved the establishment of uh, the state administrative council and also reviewed all the major matters uh, that were pending approval of the chief minister when the PDP-BJP government collapsed. And the government uh, has uh, banned the new offshoots of terrorist organizations Al-Qaeda and Islamic State under the stringent Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. 
both Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent, uh, that is AOIS, and ISIS-K, which is an Afghanistan-based affiliate of ISIS, have been declared unlawful by the Union Home Ministry. The ministry said that they were found to be radicalizing Indian youth uh, for global jihad and also encouraging the terror acts in the Indian, on the Indian soil. The stringent uh, anti-terror law, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act provides uh, strict penal provisions to, uh, to deal with the banned organizations as well as their members. And in order to prepare a roadmap for implementing the drone technology in India, the government will set up a three committees uh, to help setting up a task force. According to the Civil Aviation Ministry, the committees uh, would separately make their recommendations on manufacturing and licensing of uh, drones, airspace and air traffic management and policy and law-related issues. The decision was taken uh, during the first meeting of the Drone Task Force, uh, Chief, uh, which was chaired by Minister of uh, State for Civil Aviation, Jayant Sinha. A 13-member task force is expected to submit its report on the unmanned aerial vehicle technology in six months now. The report will focus on research and development of drones, acquisition and commercialization, preparing a regulatory framework as well as a preference for Make in India. On to some other news now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has uh, spoken about uh, targeting a double-digit GDP growth uh, for breaking into the $5 trillion economy club and said that India's uh, share in the world trade has to be doubled to 3.4%. He said this uh, while laying the foundation stone of uh, Varnijya Bhavan, a new office complex to be constructed for the Department of Commerce in Delhi. He added that his government has, in last four years, taken steps to ease the process of doing business in our country while also maintaining macroeconomic indicators like current account deficit within limits. The world, he said, is watching as to when India will break into the $5 trillion economy club by doubling its economy. The building that the Prime Minister laid the foundation for is a state-of-the-art environment-friendly building. Estimated to cost 226 crore rupees, the Vanichi Bhavan is being built on a plot of 4.33 acres in New Delhi. जितने भी भवनों का सिलान्यास या उद्घाटन करने का अवसर मुझे मिला, उसमें ज्यादातर एक बात समान थी, और कॉमन बात ये थी कि इमारतों का निर्माण भी सरकारों के काम करने के तरीकों का एक प्रकार से प्रतिबिंब होता है। न्यू इंडिया की ओर बढ़ते देश और पुरानी व्यवस्थाओं के बीच का फर्क भी इससे पता चलता है। सात प्रतिशत, आठ प्रतिशत की विकास दर से आगे बढ़कर हमें डबल डिजिट की विकास दर प्राप्त करने के लक्ष्य पर काम करना समय की मांग है। दुनिया की नजरें आज भारत को इस दृष्टि से भी देख रही हैं कि भारत कितने वर्षों में फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर के क्लब में शामिल होता है। मैं मानता हूं कि कॉमर्स मिनिस्ट्री को आप सभी जिम्मेदार अधिकारी गणों को व्यापार जगत से जुड़े हुए जो लोग यहाँ मौजूद हैं, सब ने मिलकर के इन लक्ष्यों को एक चैलेंज के रूप में लेना चाहिए। आर्थिक मोर्चे पर की गई ये प्रगति सीधे सीधे देश के सामान्य नागरिक के जीवन से जुड़ी हुई है। on to some other news now, the government on a Thursday confirmed that it is looking into the fresh revelations in the Panama Papers leak. Now, this came after media reports highlighted the presence of close to 1.2 million fresh documents, out of which 12,000 were related to Indians whose names were not disclosed in April 2016. The Finance Ministry confirmed that the case is being promptly looked into by the multi-agency group. The Central Board of Direct Tax has also said that prompt investigation is being taken in fresh series of cases pertaining to Panama Papers. 
It said that the Panama Paper leaks uh, involving 426 persons have already been investigated by the Income Tax Department and other member agencies of uh, MAG. The documents uh, detail the actions of uh, Mossack Fonseca, the legal firm at the center of the tax evasion controversy. The Panama Papers leaks uh, were originally revealed by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists in April 2016. On to the other top story of the day, Enforcement Directorate has uh, sought a fugitive offenders attack for Vijay Malia in the first case under the newly promulgated Fugitive Economic Offenders Ordinance. The agency made its uh, first move uh, to clamp down against Malia when it uh, moved a court in Mumbai to declare him as a fugitive offender and to confiscate his assets uh, worth 12,500 crore rupees. The newly promulgated ordinance empowers the agency to confiscate all assets of an absconding loan defaulter. The ED has uh, furnished the, all the evidences in its uh, two charge sheets which have been filed under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act in the past to make a case uh, for seeking a fugitive offender tag for Vijay Malia from the court. Vijay Malia is uh, in fact uh, contesting uh, these money laundering charges in London as a part of India's efforts to extradite him from there and face the legal system here in connection with an overall alleged loan default of over 9,000 crore rupees of various banks. In midday news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Vishal Dahia and this week we will discuss the issue of Space Force being announced by the United States. The sense that, uh, that many in America ha have at this point is that Russians and the Chinese are catching up and therefore if something dramatic is not done at, at this juncture, then perhaps it will be too late for America to think about space being at the final frontier for them. Our daily life on terra firma on, on the Earth is now dependent on space like, like never before. And if we, India or any other country, or the United States, doesn't protect its assets, then it's asking for trouble. We have abilities, we have to build upon, build upon them and, and multiply them. And we have to do it very fast. Trophy boat race of Kerala, popularly called Vallam Kali, in local parlance. This historic boat race dates back to 1952 when Pandit Nehru visited the state and a pageantry of boats accompanied him from Kottayam to Alapura. The race conducted on the second Saturday of August every year is a major tourist attraction. It's generally the snake boats which participate in the race and hence the shape of the winner's trophy is also a replica of a snake boat. Welcome back after the break. President Ramnath Kovind is in Cuba on the last leg of his three-nation visit. President Kovind and his wife Safida Kovind paid a tribute at the Fetal Castro Memorial in Santiago de Cuba yesterday. The president will today hold talks with the newly elected Cuban president in Cuba and four MOUs are expected to be signed between India and Cuba in the field of biotechnology, homeopathy and medicinal plants. Earlier on Thursday, President Kovind performed yoga asans with Suriname's president on the occasion of International Yoga Day. And Ramnath Kovind will conclude his visit on 23rd of June. An external affairs minister, Sushma Swaraj, has said that India and European Union stand shoulder to shoulder and are united by shared values and principles in the midst of complex challenges to global peace and security. She said this uh, during a community reception organized to honor Sushma Swaraj at the Centre for Fine Arts in Belgium. 
Now, addressing the gathering, Sushma Swaraj further said that India looks forward to Asia-Europe meeting, which is scheduled to be held in October this year, where Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu will be leading the Indian delegation. In the midst of complex challenges to global peace and security, India and the European Union stand shoulder to shoulder, united by our shared values and principles. India looks forward to the ASIM summit, which is scheduled to be held in October 2018, where Vice President Sri Venkaya Naidu will be leading our delegation. We are confident that such regular engagements between India and the European Union at the highest political levels will further enhance our excellent partnership. Sushma Swaraj also hailed India's uh, ties with Belgium, saying that as robust uh, democracies, we share the values of liberty, equality, pluralism and respect for rule of law. She added that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the country in 2016 significantly revitalized the bilateral agenda of the two nations. On the 70th anniversary of India-Belgium diplomatic ties, India had the honor to welcome his Majesty King Philip and Her Majesty the Queen. Over the years, we have significantly expanded and deepened our bilateral discourse. Currently, India is Belgium's second largest export destination and fourth largest trade partner outside the European Union. On Thursday, Sushma Swaraj also addressed the European Parliament in Brussels on the occasion of the fourth International Yoga Day. Sushma Swaraj is on the last leg of a week-long tour and before Belgium, she had visited Italy, France and Luxembourg. The External Affairs Minister will return to India tomorrow. And Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday left on a three-day tour of Mongolia, which is aimed at strengthening India's relation with the East Asian country. In a message on Twitter, the Home Minister before his departure said, leaving for Ulan Bator on a three-day visit to Mongolia, looking forward to further India's relations with Mongolia and to strengthen security cooperation. Mongolia is an important strategic partner. India wants to realize the huge potential of bilateral relations with Mongolia. Today, the Home Minister will participate in a groundbreaking ceremony of an oil refinery there, following which he would attend a reception being hosted by the Mongolian Prime Minister. And on 23rd of June, that is tomorrow, Singh will call on the Mongolian President and also meet his Mongolian counterpart. He will also visit a Buddhist monastery. The Union Home Minister will also visit the headquarters of Mongolia's Border Protection Force the same day before returning to Delhi on 24th of June. On some international news, uh, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang held talks with Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Thursday in Beijing as both the nations agreed to enhance cooperation. China and Nepal signed 14 agreements, including one on railway construction in the Himalayan nation. The railway line is expected to connect Tibet with Nepal. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said that his country is willing to work with Nepal to build an interconnectivity network across the Himalayas through the projects in ports, railways, highways, aviation and communications. The two sides also signed eight agreements worth $2.4 billion, ranging from hydroelectric to water resources project, cement factories and fruit production. Nepal and China also agreed to strengthen people-to-people -people relations, a partnership in tourism sector, exchanges of socio-cultural in various sectors and coordination and dialogue on major international issues. He said that China was willing to make joint efforts with Nepal to inject new impetus into bilateral ties as well as cooperation. The agreements came after K.P. Sharma Oli's extended talks with the Chinese President Xi Jinping during his visit to China earlier. And Iran has walked out of a key meeting with the peers of OPEC over its growing rift with Saudi Arabia on increasing the oil output. The meeting was aimed at laying the groundwork for today's crucial meeting of 14-nation OPEC to discuss easing of a supply cut deal with 10 partner countries. Iran's oil minister said that he did not think that Tehran can go further ahead. The output curbs have been in place since January 2017 and Saudi Arabia is now pushing to raise the production again 
in order to meet the growing demand in the second half of 2018. But the proposal has run into resistance from Iran, Iraq and Venezuela who would uh, struggle to immediately raise output and fear losing market share. Iran is particularly vocal about its objections as it uh, braces for the impact of fresh U.S. sanctions on its oil exports after President Donald Trump quit the international nuclear agreement. Meanwhile, the European Union has introduced retaliatory tariffs on U.S. goods in response to Donald Trump administration's decision to impose stiff tariffs on European steel and aluminium exports. The European Commission in Brussels gave its a final approval to levy new tariffs on a range of American products. EU Trade Commissioner stated that there was no other choice but to impose tariffs of their own after the unilateral and unjustified decision of the United States. Meanwhile, India, remember, had on a Thursday import, uh, levied import duties on a certain American goods in response to U.S. tariffs. And another short break here. Up next, we have all the sporting actions. Stay tuned. The biggest sporting event on earth is here. Top teams will compete to be crowned world champions. Complete analysis of all the matches. Don't miss Rajasabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup every day at 5 p.m. All right, uh, let's get you all the excitement uh, from the Football World Cup in Russia. All right, on Thursday at the FIFA World Cup in Russia, it was a day of big upset for Argentina because Croatia powered into the last 16 of the World Cup with a 3-0 route of Argentina in Group D. Lionel Messi's side were outclassed by the Croatians. Well, second half goals are from Ante Rebic, Luka Modric and Ivan Ratikic sealed the victory for Croatia. The result means that Argentina have just one point from two games and they are on the brink of elimination from the tournament. The defeat follows their opening one-all draw with Iceland in which Lionel Messi had missed a penalty and uh, now even a heavy win over Nigeria in their final game on Tuesday may not be enough to send them through to the next round. Meanwhile, in another match yesterday, France entered the pre-quarterfinals, uh, beating Peru 1-0 in the Group C encounter. Kylian Mbappe became uh, France's youngest goal uh, scorer in World Cup history when he struck in the 34th minute. The goal helped France overcome and eliminate a resilient Peru to earn a spot in the knockout round. Australia's, uh, well, Australia also secured a valuable Group C draw with Denmark to keep their hopes alive of progressing to the knockout stage of the FIFA World Cup. Both Australia and Denmark scored a goal each. Denmark's uh, Christian Eriksen scored uh, the opener in the seventh minute uh, to give his side a 1-0 lead. Australia leveled the score just before half-time but the referee awarded a penalty which uh, Mike Jorinak converted into a goal to level the score. Well, this draw means that Australians uh, have claimed a point to keep their last 16 hopes alive while Denmark uh, go top of Group C on four points. And on day 9 of the FIFA World Cup today, here are the three matches that are scheduled for the day today. Brazil will take on Costa Rica in Group E match and uh, the match will be held at 5.30pm. And the next match between Nigeria and Iceland in Group D will take place at 8.30pm. And the last match of the day is Serbia versus Switzerland in Group E which will happen at 11.30pm India time. And here is how the points tally in the groups stand right now. Take a look.
And for more updates and highlights, do watch our daily show on FIFA World Cup at 5 p.m. Don't forget to tune in. And with that, we come to an end of this edition of Midday News. News and updates continue on your channel. Thanks for watching.